Hello guys and gals. Got another choke tube video here for you today. This one's by request. Several years ago, I put together a video on choke tubes, how they work, what they're for, and how, you know, that sort of thing. And that video done really well for me. Got a lot of views on that video, a lot of comments, and a lot of questions. And I got a lot of requests in that video to do this video that I'm gonna do today. And that's just basic choke tube care, how to take care of them, how to inspect them, uh, that sort of thing, cleaning them. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll start out with just, uh, you know, for you guys that don't know, a choke tube, a screw-in choke tube screws into the muzzle of a shotgun barrel to add constriction or take away constriction, whatever, whatever it is you're looking to do. Uh, they come in all different uh, constrictions. So you can change, basically you can change the pattern of your shotgun at a given distance. So pull one out of the muzzle just so you guys know what I'm talking about. Now this shotgun has been cleared. The action is locked open. Always lock your action open anytime you're working around the muzzle. If it's a brake action, break it open. If it's a semi-auto, lock the action back. Nobody wants to lose a hand changing a choke tube. This is a choke tube wrench, by the way. This uh, came with this Beretta shotgun. There's different styles of wrenches, but they all do the same thing. So if I were gonna change this choke tube, this is how I would do it. And when I do these videos, guys, I'm not telling you how to do anything. I'm showing you guys how I do it, and maybe you can take away something from that. Uh, you can add to your, your toolbox of ideas. I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm just showing you how I do it. I'll get my new choke tube. Let's say I wanted to go to a, so this is a full choke. I took a modified, I believe it was, took a modified out, putting in a full. What, what I will do is add some grease to the threads. Every time I change a choke tube, add a little grease to the threads. If I'm packing a choke tube with me to change while I'm at a match or out hunting or whatever, I'll, I'll preload it with a little bit of grease on the threads. The grease I use is called Slick Breech Plug Nipple Grease. And what you do, you take just a little dab of this and you put it on your nipples. It makes the choke tubes go in so much easier. I'm just kidding, guys. This is for muzzle loaders. It's for keeping your breech plug and the nipple on your muzzle uh, loader from seizing. Now, the way I see it, if this has enough anti-seize in it to keep a breech plug from freezing up, if you guys know anything about muzzle loaders and black powder, those things get dirty. If it'll keep a breech plug from freezing up, it'll keep a choke tube from freezing up. So I'll put a little on the threads. A little goes a long way. You don't need a whole dump truck load here. Run it down with my hands as far as I can get it. Then I'll use the wrench. You don't want to, you know, you're not trying to hulk torque it here. You just want to give it a good snugging and you're done. You're good to go. Now, choke tubes do shoot loose. If you're at a, if you take this somewhere and shoot a couple hundred rounds through it or even 50 rounds through it, you know, you'll want to check periodically while you're at the match and make sure your choke tube's still tight. You, you'll be able to fill it with your finger. If it's running way loose, you'll be able to see it sticking up. You don't want to let it get too loose. What that'll do, there's a step inside this barrel that just, whoa, and you should never drop them. But there's a step inside this barrel that this choke tube goes up against. If it comes, comes loose, you can see that there will be a gap where gases and plastic fouling and stuff like that can get up in there. And best case scenario, you'll seize the threads up. Worst case scenario, you'll shoot it out and ruin your threads in the, on the choke tube and in your barrel. So you want to keep it tight. You don't want, don't want to let that shoot loose. But the biggest issue with people have with choke tubes is not changing them. They won't change them at all. Either they'll buy a shotgun that only has one choke tube with it, and they'll leave that choke tube in and never take it out, never service it, never clean it, and it'll end up seizing on them. 
or maybe they'll have a favorite choke tube that they use all the time, never take it out. The same difference. They never take it out, never change it, and it'll eventually seize up on them. So that's a problem. Take it out once a year, put a little grease on it, clean it, put it back in. You'll never have a problem with it seizing up. Speaking of cleaning it, I'll show you guys how I clean my choke tubes. Again, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do it. I've been asked to show you guys how I do it. So this is what I use and how I do it. Again, I go to the muzzle loader products. This is Advanced Sabo Shooter Solvent. A Sabo is plastic, kind of like plastic wadding in a shotgun. So this stuff removes plastic fouling. That's, what the, that's the kind of solvent you want to use on choke tubes. Choke tubes add constriction to the end of the barrel. So that's where 90% of your plastic fouling in a shotgun barrel is going to end up in your choke. So you want a solvent that eats plastic or removes plastic. I'll let this soak in this solvent 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Then I'll come back and I'll take a proper sized bronze or copper brush and just run it through and you'll be able to see that plastic residue peel up and roll out run it through several times then I'll take a patch run it through clean it up that looks good I'll take a copper or bronze brush and clean my threads up I'll go all the way around it get my threads nice and clean then I'll take my favorite gun cleaner rim oil CLP whatever put it on a rag and wipe it down and you're done with it uh, really simple to take care of it's just easy to, to neglect it, so a lot of people end up neglecting them. Damage, you just saw me drop one. Luckily, this is a soft wood surface. Now, if you drop one on concrete, you can cause damage, and the kind of damage that can get you hurt, so you gotta be careful. These skirts, this end is called the skirt, the end that goes back into the barrel and meets that step that I was telling you about. That's called the skirt, it's really thin. The two places that are most likely to get damaged on your choke tube are your threads and your skirt. So if you drop that on concrete or if you carry these carelessly, if, you, if I were to take all these choke tubes, throw them in a box together and carry them around like that, they're gonna bang up against each other. They're gonna flatten threads out and damage skirts. So you always wanna use a good carrying container. I like these uh, single carriers. I usually don't take more than one choke tube, one spare choke tube with me. When I go shoot, I may put a full in and take a modified or put a modified in and take a improved cylinder along just in case birds are flying high that day or whatever. But normally I don't have more than one. If you do like to carry more than one, if you shoot sporting clays or that sort of thing, you may want to get you a case. You can carry three or four, six, eight different choke tubes with you. But the main thing is to carry them in something that protects them from banging around on each other. If you damage this, this skirt, it can be dangerous. I'm rolling a picture right now I got from an article, and I'll link that article in the description of this video. This is not my photo, it belongs to the people that wrote the article, but you can click that link. It's a, it's a pretty good little article about choke tubes and how easily they are to damage like this. But if you dent this skirt up and you shoot that shotgun, it allows gases and fouling, and it's gonna grab you know plastic fouling and stuff, and it's gonna blow that choke tube out eventually. You're gonna break your threads. You're gonna break your choke tube. If you're lucky, that's all, all that happens. If you're unlucky, you'll end up splitting your barrel. You'll blow your barrel out. Of course, that's dangerous. If you've got people standing beside you, it can even be dangerous to yourself, you know. Some of that metal comes back. So, always watch. Anytime you change your choke tubes when you're putting a new one in, just look at your skirt. Make sure it looks good. Cause that's, that's where you're gonna have your problems. But, uh, I think that's all I got today, guys. I just want to do a short video and hope that answered the questions that I had gotten on a previous video. As always, links to my other social media accounts are in the description below, as well as the link to the choke tube video that I did several years back if you want to check that out. That's all I got today. This is Buffalo, and I'll talk with you guys again soon.